हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडेज टॉपिक इज इन्फ्रा ऑर्बाइटल नर्व ब्लॉक गाइडेड बाय डॉक्टर भूषण भगत सर द इन्फ्रा ऑर्बाइटल नर्व ब्लॉक इज अ हाईली सक्सेसफुल नर्व ब्लॉक विद द यूज ऑफ प्रॉपर टेक्निक द नर्व ब्लॉक कैन प्रोवाइड प्रोफाउंड पल्पल एंड पकल सॉफ्ट टिश्यू एनेस्थेशिया इन द इप्सिलैट्रल मैगजेलरी सेंट्रल इंसाइजर टू द मैगजेलरी प्री मोलर एरिया The infraorbital nerve block is a branch of the maxillary nerve which is in turn a branch of the trigeminal nerve which is also the fifth cranial nerve so here's a diagram showing the course of the maxillary nerve so the maxillary nerve when it enters into the infraorbital groove or the infraorbital canal it is called as the infraorbital nerve the infraorbital nerve gives a branch called a middle superior alveolar nerve posterior to the infraorbital canal further it gives the anterior superior alveolar nerve in the anterior part of the canal the infraorbital nerve exits through the canal through the infraorbital foramen on the anterior surface of the maxilla where it gives the terminal branches namely the inferior palpebral lateral nasal and the superior labial nerves Now let's see the course and innervation of the infraorbital nerve. The nerves anesthetized are the ipsilateral middle superior alveolar nerve, anterior superior alveolar nerve and its terminal branches that is the inferior palpebral, lateral nasal and superior labial nerves. The areas anesthetized according to the nerves anesthetized are The middle superior alveolar nerve anesthetizes the maxillary premolars and the mesobuccal root of the first molar and the mucoperiosteum. The anterior superior alveolar nerve anesthetizes the maxillary incisors and canines with the mucoperiosteum. The areas anesthetized by the terminal branches are the area to the lower eyelid, lateral part of the nose and the upper lip. Here's a diagram showing the areas anesthetized. In the first diagram, we can see that the middle superior alveolar nerve and the anterior superior alveolar nerve anesthetizes the maxillary incisors, canines, premolars, and the mesobuccal root of the maxillary first molar. The second diagram shows the area anesthetized by the terminal branches of the infraorbital nerve. Now let's see the landmarks and relations of the infraorbital nerve block. The anatomical landmarks include the bony landmarks and the soft tissue landmarks. The bony landmarks are namely supraorbital ridge and notch, infraorbital ridge and notch, infraorbital depression, maxillary premolars and the mental foramen. The soft tissue includes the pupil of the eye. The image shows the anatomical landmarks The muscle landmarks include the quadratus labii superior, superioris muscle or the QLS muscle. This lies superior to the infraorbital foramen and the caninus muscle which lies inferior to the infraorbital foramen. The vascular landmarks include external maxillary artery, anterior facial vein which lies superior and mesial to the infraorbital foramen. Now the indications for the infraorbital nerve block are when the ipsilateral anterior and middle superior nerves are to be anesthetized any procedure surgical or operative can be performed on the five maxillary anterior teeth on the ipsilateral or same side of the midline but when operating on the central incisor the midline or overlapping innervation should be considered now the needle pathway during innervation there are two approaches to the infraorbital nerve block namely the bicuspid approach and the central incisor approach in the bicuspid approach the needle passes through the mucosa and alveolar mucosa and passes beneath and lateral to the external maxillary artery and the anterior facial vein in the central incisor approach the needle passes through the mucosa and areolar tissue beneath the angular head of the quadratus labii superioris and proceeds anteriorly to the origin of caninus the approximating structures to the needle so when the needle is in its final position 
it should be at the orifice of the infraorbital foramen it should be beneath the infraorbital head of the quadratus labii superioris and above the origin of the canineus muscle the vessels should lie superior and mesial to the needle now let's move on to the technique in the bicuspid approach the patient is sitting comfortably in the chair so that the maxillary occlusal plane is making 45 degree angle to the ground the patient is asked to look straight and the bony landmarks are to be palpated when the infraorbital notch is palpated the operator moves the palpating finger 0.5 cm downward where the infraorbital depression is palpated an imaginary line passing through the pupil of the eye infraorbital depression maxillary bicuspids and the mental foramen is drawn and the palpating finger is kept in the depression so the picture here shows the imaginary line drawn th through these anatomical landmarks for the right side the dentist should stand on the right side of the patient partially facing the patient the thumb of the left hand of the dentist should palpate the infraorbital depression and the index finger should be used to retract the lip a 26 gauge long needle is inserted into the mucolabial fold over to the over the second maxillary premolar parallel to the imaginary line drawn so the image shows the in a pathway of insertion of the needle which should be parallel to the imaginary line drawn the needle should be passed about 5 mm from the labial plate to pass over the canine fossa then the left hand thumb is used to direct the needle into position so that it contacts the bone at the entrance of the foramen the approximately 2 ml of solution is deposited in this area and the thumb is held in position till the solution is injected completely for the left side the same technique is used the exception that the operator stands slightly more in front of the patient now in the central incisor approach the direction of the needle insertion bisects the crown of the central incisor from the mesio incisal angle to distal gingival angle so the image shows the two angles demarcated and the line of insertion the needle is again inserted about 5 mm from mucolabial fold and guided by the palpating thumb the needle should gently hit the boundaries of the foramen now the signs and symptoms are the subjective symptoms tingling and numbness of the lower eyelid side of the nose and upper lip the numbness of teeth and soft tissue of the anterior five teeth the objective symptoms will be absence of pain during the procedure the advantages of the infraorbital nerve block are it is comparatively simple procedure comparatively safe it minimizes the amount of local anesthesia deposited the complications are hematoma but it is very rare and edema thank you